Hi everyone. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about white privilege. You might have heard the term within the past year or so. It's kind of come up in the media, especially in regard to George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement. And that was kind of in the United States. And George Floyd was the individual that was essentially murdered by the police officer who was kneeling on his neck. So basically what white privilege is, it has to do with your skin color. And that's that's really the basis of it and how you might benefit in society based on your skin color. It doesn't have anything to do with, oh, you're white, you're not going to struggle financially, or you're white, you're you're just going to get every job that you walk into. That's That's not at all what it is. It's basically just about how you're benefiting in society based on that skin color. Um, so I'll give a few examples I can when I'm talking about this. So for example, like we're not questioned unnecessarily. We're not questioned where we are, where we're going, things like that. Like, um, whereas a black person is 20% more likely to be stopped by a police officer than a white individual. Um, as well, there is an overrepresentation of indigenous people and black people who are incarcerated and these same individuals as children, there's a higher percentage of these indiv individuals within the child welfare system. And that's like a major problem within Canada, United States, like it's a major problem in a lot of countries. Also, if you take like something like s so simple as band-aids, for example, um, I can go into the store and I can grab a pack of band-aids that's fairly close to my skin color, whereas up until recently, I couldn't find band-aids that were darker, like made for someone with darker skin. And it might seem like a really simple thing, but to someone who is darker skinned, it's a pretty major thing, like it can be for sure. Also, if you look at like children's books, the majority of the children's books that are on the market today, a lot of them, if they have characters, a lot of them use characters that are white, whereas you don't really see as many books that are having characters who are darker skinned in them. So in addition, white people don't have as many stereotypes associated with the Caucasian race. Like for example, when I was growing up, there was a lot of like negativity and a lot of stereotypes against um, indigenous people. And I know that these stereotypes are not accurate, um, but growing up like that's that was the culture, like I didn't know differently. So like I've heard things like, oh, indigenous people are lazy, they don't work, they just get paid all this money, they don't pay taxes, like there's tons of stereotypes against them. And even stereotypes that look like they're positive can be harmful. So for example, um, one stereotype that looks positive on the outside could be that um, Chinese children or Chinese people in general are very smart. And perhaps the majority are, but it's negatively hurting the people that maybe they struggled in school, but they're Chinese. And so, so they're not fitting within that stereotype maybe, and it's harmful to them. Um, so as a whole, it is harmful, even though it might look like it's really positive on the outside. Um, but going back to white privilege, um, so if you're looking at like, black people and the wages that they make in comparison to white people a black woman makes on average 62 to 63 cents for every dollar that a white man makes that's a big difference and that is a big difference in your paycheck at the end of the year so i think like being white it's not something to be guilty about like i'm white there's you know you have no choice in like the race that you're born right so it's not something to be guilty about, but I think it's something to be aware of and just to be aware of your social location. So like your geographical location, your race, your gender, um, your age, like how all these factors impact where you are in society. And just to be aware of like where you're benefiting and where you might be experiencing oppression. I think it's also important to be aware of how white people got ahead. So. If you look at black people and like the slavery, or if you look at like indigenous people and the colonialism, the residential schools, the 60s scoop, like all these things, so many factors 
There's been so many factors that have negatively impacted various groups and during all this time a lot of a lot of it was white people and particularly white men who have been like in policy um, making laws like doing all these things and it's negatively impacted other groups so there's been like a lot of ways that as a white person we have been able to get ahead more so like the res last residential school in Canada closed in 1996 um, for the longest time like the Indian Act and it's still in effect today but for the longest time it impacted them even more like indigenous people weren't allowed to leave the reserve um, like there was an Indian agent who controlled a lot of their lives and these things are still happening today like we can't choose the race that we're born but I think it's important to be aware of it um, and I may have talked about some words that you might not understand yet but I'm hoping to be able to make some more videos and kind of shed some light on some of these social injustices that are still going on today so yeah thank you so much